The sun was shining in my eyes. A cruel, brutal sun that had sucked every drop of water from the earth. And now it was trying to kill me. I rolled on my stomach and I started crawling. A hundred times I died. But each time I saw his face before me and I lived again. That's the voice of a man who keeps a dark appointment on Theater 5. Beginning of the city or the end, depending on how you look at it. That's what the man said. The beginning or the end. Well, we'll see. Uh, mister? Yeah? Uh, lousy night, eh? The fog cuts right through you. It goes right into your bones. You know, a cup of coffee feel real good inside of me. So would a bottle of Sneaky Pete, huh? Oh, no, no. Not me, mister. Just a cup of coffee's all I want. Just a dime for a cup of coffee, that's all. How about a dollar? A buck? Oh, gee, thanks, mister. Uh, uh, hold it, hold it. Uh, you haven't earned it yet. Earned it? You mean you, you you want me to work for the dollar? Mm-hmm. Oh, mister, I, I got a bad back. I, I can't... All I want is information. Oh, information? You want information? Well, sure, sure. You just ask me anything you want to. What kind of information you want, mister? I'm looking for Jerry's Bar and Grill. Jerry's? Oh, oh I know Jerry's place. Mm, I figured you might. Sure. You, you just go straight along Cherry Street to, um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, to Westcott. That's right, Westcott. How far is that? Uh, oh, only two, three blocks. Then what do I do? Well, you, you just turn on Westcott to your left. Uh, uh, no, 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 to your right. Your right. And you'll see Jerry's Bar. You can't miss the sign. You see it right away. No, no trouble at all. Now, a, a, a dollar, mister. Ah, you're not finished yet. Oh, you, you want to know something else? A few things. Where's the ace pool room? The ace? Oh, that's easy. It's on Cherry Street, before you make the turn on Westcott. Now, one more thing. Just one more, huh? Then I get the dollar? Yeah. All right, mister. What do you want to know, huh? Where do I find Paul Darien? Huh? Paul Darien. He lives in this neighborhood. Paul, huh? Paul, uh... Well, let me see, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Paul, I know him. Well, I remember now. Oh, I've seen him around lots of times. He has a scar on his face. Yeah, yeah, sure, a scar. A deep one on his cheek. On his cheek, that's right, that's right. You can't help noticing it, you know. Why, you... <laughs> Paul Mr. doesn't have any scar. I, I, my I got him. No, no, don't. Please don't hurt me, mister. Please. Uh, you're like the rest of them. Oh, I didn't mean no harm, mister. I don't know faces or people. But I don't remember. All I want is something to drink and a warm place to sleep. That's all. Here. The dollar. Take it before I change my mind. Oh, oh thanks. Thanks, mister. I, I wish I could help you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's the truth. I, I guess you want to find this other fellow real bad, huh? That's right. Real bad. Six ball in a side pocket. I was uh, asking you about Paul Darien. I told you, I never heard him. Nine ball in the corner. Pretty good, huh? Uh, Paul used to tell me about this place. He said he came here at least a couple of nights a week. Yeah, I never saw him. Yeah, he's tall, blonde hair, and good looking. Hey, look, fella, why don't you just give up? You've asked just about everybody in this place, and you keep getting the same answer. Now, that answer ain't gonna change. Look, I came a long way. Paul and I were good friends, and I just want to see him, that's all. You're standing in my way. I want to make my next shot. But all I want to know is where he lives. Well, I don't have any idea where he lives or who he is. And I know when I've been lied to. Now, look, follow Now, you're all lying, all of you, every one of you. Huh? You hear me? You're lying. Oh, you don't want me to find him, but I will. And I'll find him if I have to beat it out of you. That was pretty dumb, fella. 
You better get out of here. Another shot, friend? Yeah, fill it up. That'll be 40 cents. Take it out of my change. I, uh, I, uh, started to ask you about a friend of mine a while ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you say his name was? Paul Darien. Huh. You know, it's funny. You get to know some people by just their first names. They might be regulars, come in almost every day of the week for years. All you know is their first names. Sometimes it's only a nickname, like Shorty or Lefty. Well, Paul's the kind of man you don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's one Paul who comes in here a lot. A truck driver. Yeah, what's he look like? That's hard to say. It's another guy, short, dark. Yeah, Paul Darien's tall and blonde. <laughs> He's not this one, that's for sure. How about another drink, friend? No, I think I've had enough. Come on, this one's on the house. Well, I'll take a rain check if you don't mind. You're the boss. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, uh, yeah. Do you know of a decent hotel nearby? Well, not a decent one, friend. There's a lot of flop houses around here. But there's a Mercury Hotel that's about a mile away. They got real good rates, but a week. Well, I don't know how long I'll be staying, and the rates don't bother me, but I'd like to be nearby. Well, Mercury's pretty reasonable all around. Guess I could take a cab there, huh? Sure, sure. Turn left outside, go one block for Western Avenue. Plenty of cabs on Western. All right, well, thanks a lot. I'll be going now. Yeah, come again. I probably will. Good night. Good night, friend. Hello, Sally. Jerry. Jerry's Bar and Grill. Look, uh, something I want to tell you. No, 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 not on the phone. Too many people around. Fine. Okay, Sally. I'll be expecting you. I can't stay long, Jerry. I have to get back to Paul. No, you sit right over here at the end of the bar right, where we can talk. All right. How about a drink? No, no, thanks. What is it, Jerry? Well, there was a fella in here asking about Paul. What do you want to know? Your address. At least Paul's address. Didn't mention you at all. Did he give you his name? No. And I'll tell you something else. When this fella came in here and started asking questions about your brother, I wasn't surprised. Hey, Jerry, how about a drink? Help yourself. The bottle's on look, the bar. Look, Jerry, what did you mean you weren't surprised? Well, Benny dropped in tonight. You know Benny Greco. Yes, I know him. Well, Benny came here straight from the ace pool room, said they had some trouble there. The fellow was asking questions about Paul. Finally, he got a little tough. They almost had to throw him out. Was it the same man? From Benny's description, I'd say, yeah. Well, how would you describe this man? Well, he's maybe in his middle 30s, about six foot tall, brown hair. Jerry, where is this man now? He said something about catching a cab. Sally... Look, I don't know who this fella is or what he wants, but I'm sure of one thing. What's that? He's no friend of Paul's. Maybe... Look, maybe you ought to go to the cops, huh? What would I tell him? I don't know. Well, thanks for phoning me. I, I have to go home now. What are you going to do? Nothing. Good night, Jerry. Miss, can you spare a dime for a cup of coffee? Oh, hello, Shiler. Huh? Oh, oh, hello, miss. You don't remember me, do you? Oh, sure, sure I remember you, miss. It's this fog. I can't hardly see. Moisture eats into your bones. A cup of coffee would feel real good. Well, here. Ah. Here, Shiler. Thank you, miss. Thank you. Oh, careful you don't knock that wine bottle over. Huh? The bottle on the sidewalk, just behind you. Oh, 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 yeah, sure, miss. I'll be careful. Night, Charlotte. Good night, miss. Mister, you got a dime for a... Get couple. out of my way. Huh? Just a minute. 
Uh, I'm a friend of Paul Darien. Uh, come on in. Thanks. I uh, just got into town tonight. I know. Huh? I saw you outside Jerry's Bar and Grill. You uh, knew I followed you? Yes. <laughs> you made it real easy for me. Who are you? Sally Darien, Paul's sister. Where's Paul? In the next room. Does he know I followed you? He thinks you're dead. You uh, know who I am? Yes. Stanley Fenton. Did Paul tell you about me? Yes. How much did he tell you? The whole story. <laughs> the whole story. Well, I know all about Paul's stories. There was even a time when I believed them. There was a time when you could believe them. Must have been before I met him. That was in Arizona, wasn't it? Yeah. Arizona. We walked for seven days through the desert. And then we reached the foot of Indian Mountain. The end of the rainbow. It's up there, Stan. Just like that old man told us. All the gold you can carry on your back is up there waiting for you. Well, I hope so, Paul. I hate to think of making a round trip for nothing. You take my word for it, pal. It won't be long before we'll do our traveling in style. <laughs> I can just see myself driving down Cherry Street in a pink Cadillac. <laughs> They'll eat their hearts out. And Stan, you'll be riding right beside me. Oh, I don't know. City life doesn't appeal to me. The only kind of life there is. Oh, I don't mean Cherry Street. That neighborhood is strictly for losers. Well, then why do you keep talking about going back? Because I want everybody there to know I'm a winner. That's where we're going to dig all the gold we can carry out of that mountain. If there is any gold up there. Well, there's gold, all right. There's got to be. There's just got to be. It's more than a year ago, wasn't it? Thirteen months. Paul told me there was gold. Yeah, plenty of it. Only you had to sluice down tons of dirt to get an ounce. We were getting two ounces a day. But it didn't rain. The sun baked everything beneath it. And after two weeks, the stream we were using for our sluices became just a trickle. But Paul wanted to stay. Yeah. He kept saying that this was our one big chance. <laughs> there was this dark cloud on the horizon, and Paul said it would bring rain. We watched it all day, and it moved to the west of us. There wasn't any rain. That day, or the next, or the next. Finally, our stream dried up completely. We went from one water hole to another. All of them were dried out, baked hard by the sun. Ahead of us, there was nothing but desert. <laughs> we had 35 ounces of gold and a gallon of water. All we need is one rainstorm. Just one good rainstorm. Just one. Yeah, well, look at that sky. Rain doesn't come out of a sky like that. How long would it take us to get back to the river? At least six days. Six days. One gallon of water. That's about two-thirds of a pint each day. Is that enough? I don't know. Don't give me that. Paul, for the past week, it's been more than 110 degrees in the shade every day. Now, in that kind of heat, a body needs at least a quart of water a day. Or what? Or it dehydrates. Then we don't have nearly enough water, do we? Wait a minute. What if... What if we had another gallon of water? That'd be a gallon each. And that'd be enough? Probably, if we rationed it out carefully. That makes it all very Simple? Simple? Sure. You see, if we both try to make it, we'll die out in that desert. But if only one of us... Oh, no, I... Oh. When I came to, the sun was in my eyes. I rolled onto my stomach and then I crawled. I don't know how much time passed. I just crawled and crawled. Thinking only of him. Thinking only of... Of killing him? Yeah. All right. Of killing him. That is what kept me alive. But you were badly hurt. And you had no water. A prospector found me. I don't remember that part of it. They told me later. It seems he dumped his equipment and used his mule to carry me out of the desert into a hospital. 
For a long time, they thought I was going to die. But I knew I wouldn't. How long were you in the hospital? Eight months. I got out five months ago. What did you do then? I got a job. Saved my money. You see, I needed money to come here and look for Paul. Also, to buy this. Yeah. Yeah, I bought this gun with my first paycheck. Oh, I cleaned it every night. And every night I imagined how it would feel to have him standing in front of Stan. me. Stan. Don't now, worry, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not afraid of that. And don't try to talk me out now, of it. Now, just listen to me, please. You can't save your brother. I'm not trying to save him. I'm trying to save you. Nothing can change what's going to happen. Don't you realize what this will do to you? It'll give me some peace. Do you think a murderer can ever find peace? All right, call it satisfaction. Call it whatever you like. Stan, they'll hunt you down. They won't have to. Now, get on that phone and call the police. What? Tell them what's going to happen. Tell them I'll be here waiting for them. You're throwing your life away. Well, I figure it's a fair trade. All right. Now, I'll give you just enough time to use that phone, and then you'll have to get out of here. No, I'm staying. That won't stop me. Killing him has been the only thing on my mind night and day, every second of every minute since he left me out there to die. If you kill him, you'll destroy yourself. Your hatred is a poison. It's a drug that kept me alive. Once it was, now it's something else. Yeah, yeah, you, you might be right about that. But it's something else. A hunger burning inside of me. A hunger that won't be satisfied until I put some bullets into him. And what happens after that? I don't care. I just don't care. But I do. Now, get away from that door. No. Now, don't force me to hurt you. I don't want to do that. Why worry about hurting me? You're going to kill a man, aren't you? Yes. If it's the last thing I do, yes. All right, Stan, all right. Let me show you this man you're going to kill. There. There he is, on the bed. Paul? That's Paul? It's what's left of him. Uh, Sally. Sally? I'm... I'm here, Paul. Sally. I... I... Oh, I thought I... I heard something. No, dear, it's, it's all right. No, no. No, it was his voice. I'm sure of it. I... Sally, I see him. No. I see him. No, dear, no. But, but there's someone... But it's I... the, the... The doctor. Oh. He, he gave you some medicine and, and, and he stopped by to see how you are. Looks just like him. No, the light plays tricks with your eyes, Paul. Uh, yeah. Yes, it can't be him, can it? No, no, dear, of course not. Uh, I killed him. That's why my arm was paralyzed, huh? It's my punishment. And I wouldn't be punished if he was still alive. Oh, dear, close your eyes. Yeah. I imagine things. I see things that aren't really there. Go to sleep. You never know when I'm dreaming or when it's real. You know, stay... Near me? Yes, yes, Paul. I get so frightened when I get... Uh... Well, there he is, Stan. There's the man you want to kill. I swore I would. All you have to do is raise the gun. It'll take only a split second. But you'll have the rest of your life to think about it. Stan, listen to me. Listen and believe me. There's a world out there that has good things in it, wonderful things. Don't throw it away because of him. He, he said his arm was paralyzed. That's his guilt. That's his guilt. Kill him and the guilt will be yours. Do you want that? Look at him, Stan. Do you want that? No. No. No, I don't want that. Goodbye, Sally.
Theater 5 has presented Dark Appointment, written by Don Herring and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Evelyn Juster, Stan Watt, Nat Poland, Owen Jordan, and Robert Dryden. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound tech-